Back in 2018, Game Freak decided to throw all of us a curveball when they announced Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee, spiritual successors to the classic game Pokemon Yellow for the Game Boy and Game Boy Color. These games were controversial when they were announced, and they're still seen as a bit of a black sheep in the Pokemon franchise. With a lot of changes and influences from the popular mobile game Pokemon Go, which took the world by storm back into the summer of 2016, Game Freak decided to return us to Kanto, with Pokemon following behind you at all times, and a totally revamped catching mechanic, with a less of an emphasis placed on battles. The entire system created a game that is almost a hybrid between the Pokemon Go experience and the mainline Pokemon RPG experience. The results was a game that most people enjoyed but felt was very bare bones. Now in today's video, we're going to be taking another look at these two games and we're going to see if they're properly rated by the Pokemon community or if they're underrated gems that you should give some more time on your Nintendo Switch. Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and today, as I mentioned in the preview in the beginning of the video, we are going to be talking about the black sheep of the Pokemon main series games, Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. These games were announced in May, end of May, beginning of June of 2018, and everybody was expecting Gen 8, Diamond and Pearl remakes, something of that sort, and we didn't get that. We ended up getting a remake of Pokemon Yellow with with changes to the core gameplay mechanics that brought it similar to the mobile game Pokemon Go. And to this day, these games are a bit controversial in the Pokemon community from some of the features they added and some of the things they removed to the timing of this game and the messaging that was coming from Game Freak. Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, in my opinion, was the beginning of this very visceral backlash from part of the Pokemon community towards Game Freak that eventually made its way into the coverage of Pokemon Sword and Shield in the following year. Now, we're going to be going through most of the parts of these games, and I'm going to give what I think are the positives and what I think are the negatives. First of all, when you load up these games and you look at them for the first time, you'll see the graphics and the music. The style of Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee is what I would say is best described as an enhanced version of X and Y and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire's graphics. You still have that chibi look of the characters that was abandoned in Sun and Moon uh, following uh, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, but it's completely up res. It's 1080p, it's gorgeous on the Nintendo Switch. The models still seem a bit clunky in how they move, but that's been every Pokemon game ever. This is just kind of what we expect. But graphical fidelity, these games are gorgeous. The environments are gorgeous to look at. It's all in a very simplistic style, which makes it very charming and harkens back to the Pokemon original games of Red, Blue, and Yellow. The music, of course, sounds almost as if it's orchestrated in these games. It's renditions of the Kanto track that we've never been able to hear before in such high fidelity, and that's a word that I've used a lot with graphics and music so far. But the music is fantastic. It's one of the best soundtracks Pokemon has ever put out, and every single track is a home run, whether it's Pallet Town, Cerulean City, the Elite Four, Gym Leader Battles, the Champion, whether it's boss battles, all of it is gorgeous. Whether it's Team Rocket's theme, so many iconic tracks, all the different routes, so many iconic tracks from Kanto are completely remastered in this game, and it shows. It shows that they put a lot of time and work into them. You can feel that they saw these tracks as like the classic Pokemon tracks, and they put a lot of work into them. Gameplay, of course, is where things get a little interesting. Now, it's still the same RPG Pokemon format that we've known for the last 20 plus years. You're going around a region, you're collecting gym badges, but the changes in this game come from what they've taken from Pokemon Go. Now, everybody knows what Pokemon Go is. It's the game where that came out in 2016 where you can catch Pokemon on a map of the real world. You fling uh, your finger across the screen to throw Pokeballs. You don't battle the Pokemon, but you can battle in gyms. Game Freak decided to rip that catching mechanic from Pokemon Go and put it into this main series game. So there's no more Pokemon battles with normal wild Pokemon. There are with some legendaries, but none with normal ones. All you do is you try to catch the Pokemon by using motion controls to throw a Pokeball, to give it berries, to try to incentivize that Pokemon to come with you. 
And overall, there's positives and negatives. Battling wild Pokemon was always a great way to grind up for experience, and while you still get experience from catching Pokemon, there was nothing like sending out your Pokemon in battle, and that's been largely relegated to trainers. So the only guys that you're going to battle to train up your Pokemon are trainers in the wild, trainers in gyms, gym leaders, boss battles, etc. The catching mechanic is controversial, but it's different, and it's the Pokemon community for a long time was always pressing Game Freak to change up the formula. In Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, they radically changed up the formula, and I saw a lot of complaints about it in comparison to what the old formula was, but I think the, the process itself stands on its own. When you're playing it, when you're able to just kind of relax sitting on your couch, uh, playing Pokemon Let's Go on the TV screen with one Joy-Con in hand because the controller setup was very different in this game, I felt that it was very relaxing, and I enjoyed it quite a bit. Gameplay, it's the catching mechanic for battles, uh, it's the same story as Yellow, you're taking on Team Rocket, you're trying to become the champion, you're trying to catch all 151 Pokemon, nothing has really changed here. Uh, a couple of the characters have been swapped out, uh, Gary's been swapped out as the main rival, um, but overall, it's largely the same story that you got in Yellow. One of the other features that they brought back from older games in this one is walking with Pokemon. For all of your journey, Pikachu's on your shoulder or Eevee's on your shoulder, and you have one of your Pokemon following behind you. It's the first slot in your party, and it's every single Pokemon in the Kanto decks. Whether it's a Gyarados, a Kangaskhan, a Pidgey, a Rattata, a Squirtle, a Blastoise, anything. A Dodrio, you can ride on certain Pokemon, you'll fly on certain Pokemon. This, the, Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee have the best implemented scaling and overworld Pokemon of any game in the franchise. All of the Pokemon are properly sized to what they are in the Pokedex and what they are in the TV show, and all of them are properly sized in battles relative to the trainer standing behind them. This is the best implementation of Pokemon in the world you're running through of any game in the series. Sword and Shield's DLC tried to emulate it a little bit with the Isle of Armor and what we presume will also be in the Crown Tundra, but let's go Pikachu and Eevee are the gold standard for Pokemon out in the wild with you, Pokemon, how they appear in battle, all of that. It's exceptional. It's incredibly well done. It's incredibly well paced. All of the Pokemon follow you at appropriate intervals. They all stay with you. You can't really push them around and it kind of look a little bad like it does in Sword and Shield. It's the best implementation of walking with Pokemon. Now, another feature that they sort of took from uh, Pokemon Go, but also just kind of harkened back to classic Pokemon RPGs is when you face legendary Pokemon like the birds or Mewtwo in this game, you battle them before having an opportunity to catch them. So you have to defeat them in battle and then you get to go to the catching mechanic. This is what we all assume Pokemon battles are really like if Pokemon had been real. This is a great implementation of boss battles. You get to battle them and you get an opportunity to catch them. You get both. You get the cool new catching mechanic that is a staple for Let's Go and you also get to whittle their down their HP and actually engage with them in combat. This makes boss battles very different from main wild battles, and it just it makes it feel more real and it makes it feel like this could actually happen. It's another feature that I think because Game Freak stripped the wild battles feature and just made it exclusive to boss battles, it made the boss battles even more special. Another thing about the overworld, and you'll hear me hit on this a lot because the overworld is very well done in this game, is that you can see shiny Pokemon sprites in the overworld. Now, I understand in Sword and Shield that part of the appeal is to encounter it and see if it's shiny. I get that. I think Let's Go is a nice reprieve from that and it gives you a little bit of a different way of going about shiny hunting. It's only natural that you would assume, if I can see these Pokemon in the wild, I'm going to see if they're shiny or not. And that's one of the brilliant things that Let's Go did. If you're in a Viridian Forest and you see a shiny Caterpie, that gold tint, you're going to see it. You can run up to it and battle it. It, it. The immersion factor when you can see shiny Pokemon in the overworld is something that you don't get in any other games, and it's exceptionally well done. Now, we're going to hit on some of the negatives of the features of this game for a second because there are some strong ones. One, like I mentioned before, they changed up the characters in this game. So one could assume that this runs count. This is a counter track to the story we had in Red, Blue and Yellow. There was no trainer customization in those games. I get it. Perfectly fine. But this is not a flat remake. So why is there no trainer customization for your male and female protagonists? I feel like that was a completely missed opportunity. It's in every single other game. 
Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, I would have had the same criticism, and I do. The other thing that, maybe it's just for me, but it just seems so out of place and so janky, is that there's no day-night cycle. I want to see some of these environments at nighttime. We get to see them in Kanto and HeartGold and Soul Silver. Why was this cut? And we're like, oh, there were no day and night cycle in the original game, so we're not going to have it in here. I think that's a crap argument. I don't like it. There should have been day and night cycle. Pokemon Evolutions is the other one. There are a lot of Pokemon that are given evolutions in later generations from Kanto. Golbat's a good example. Golbat evolves into Crobat in Gold and Silver. We're in 20, at the time, 2018. These Pokemon should be available. We should be able to get a Crobat. We should be able to get a Steelix. We should be able to get a Hitmontop. All of these different Pokemon we should be able to acquire. We were able to Mega Evolve and we're able to get Alolan forms in this game, but we can't evolve Pokemon to their newer evolutions. It's just oversights that you can tell they were going for almost like we're going to stay uh, true to the original game, but these are obvious things that should have been evolved since we've come up with so much time since Yellow was originally put out. The last thing about these games is its connection to Go, and obviously we saw that with the gameplay, but another avenue that we saw it with is that you could actually transfer Pokemon from Go to Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. Kanto Pokemon, of course, but you could then catch them. You could Their shiny variants would hold over, so if you had a shiny in Go and you transferred it to one of the Let's Go games, you still got that shiny. This is great. This is something that all Pokemon games should have. Uh, we've heard that there's going to be Go connectivity to Pokemon Home moving forward, but we just haven't seen it yet. This is another feature that I hope they carry over. With that being said, that's my overview of Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. A long 10 minute tangent because I quite like these games. And after replaying them over the last couple weeks, I felt that they're a little underappreciated. They change up the formula in a way that we've been calling for as Pokemon fans for years, and they do it while still respecting the core aspects of the series. Sure, there are definitely some shortcomings with these games, and if they were ever able to make another set of Let's Go games, I would hope these would all get addressed. But I think these games have value, and I think that if you're a Pokemon fan who didn't pick these up on the Switch, and you were a little annoyed by some of the graphical features of Sword and Shield, I think you should give these games a chance and see what you're missing out on, because if you love Kanto, which I admittedly don't really, uh, these games are brilliant additions to Pokemon. With that, this video is a wrap, and I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, we're going to be having another video in a couple days, hopefully an Among Us video. That's going to be a fun time. And if you enjoyed, be sure to let me know down in the comments section, and if you want to see more Pokemon game reviews like this one, let me know. If you're not subscribed, of course, please hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you never miss any new content. With that, I've been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.